Okay. Okay, so I'm going to be refuting the claim of fact that argue that the benefits of college are declining. To quickly recap the reasons that were given for this verdict, uh, can be summarized as follows. Uh, student debt is rising due to increasing tuition cost. The high number of students attending college are raising the bar to what is considered standard, and that the jobs for graduates are quite scarce. Although I think she did a good job in presenting uh, her points and the implications, it's evident that she's under some uh, severe or grave misapprehensions. I find that some of the facts presented were insufficient to prove her point. Uh, some of the examples were hypothetical and uh, fallacious. And I also believe that there's a generalization made in the body of the argument. Uh, one of the uh, secondary claims was that the rising cost of tuition is reducing the benefits of college. The incipient question that was leading up to this uh, was whether we'd be making a profit. To that, she gave the following PayScale study. There are only 72 out of 2,700 four-year uh, schools in America at which earning a degree can get you a million dollar return uh, over high school grads. Now, this statistic fails to show a decline of any sort. In order to effectively demonstrate that there has been a decline, you would have to provide a comparison between uh, statistics, uh, uh, how the conditions are now and how they used to be. Uh, but all this does is show the conditions of today. And so it's, it's un you cannot draw uh, the conclusion that there has been a decline. Uh, furthermore, uh, I don't, you don't need a million dollar return on your investment to make a profit. Uh, I think this was somewhat of a tacit suggestion that you wouldn't be able to pay back your loans. Uh, but in fact, according to the article, the same article in which this study was found, uh, the average tuition was $20,000 a year. According to College Board data from 2015 to 2016, uh, the, two, the average tuition was about $24,000. So let's assume that um, it takes us five years to graduate. That's $120,000. Um, would we still benefit from a bachelor's degree? That's the question. And yes, we would. In 2015, the U.S. Department of Education's National Center for Education Statistics found that college degree holders earn 25,000 more than those with high school diploma. That's $500,000 in just a period of two decades, which is enough to pay off your loans and still be left with a nice amount of change. I would also like to emphasize that uh, according to the census, this disparity in uh, wages is uh, increasing. Another point that was mentioned was that many more students are now getting bachelor's degrees than 50 years ago. And what was claimed was that you would no longer be able to stand out among a pool of applicants at a job. And she didn't really give any concrete evidence that uh, this increase in degrees obtained has, uh, has posed a serious problem or impact to the job market. But let's, take, let's suppose we take the hypothetical. It's not entirely inconceivable. It is fallacious. It's based on the assumption that all bachelor's degrees are the same. Never mind your GPA. Never mind uh, the experience you may have acquired uh, through selective internships or research or the connections you may have made. Networking, by the way, I think is something that was failed to consider. You must see how this is a fail in logic. There are many ways in, you, in which you can still stand out even among your peers. Uh, to the last point regarding jobs, what was said was that graduates were having to settle for jobs that did not pertain to their certification. This meant that the benefit of working in the field of your interest was essentially lost. We must ask if this is relevant. Um, it's a bit of a stretch to say that because this is true for some, which I suspect are liberal arts majors, uh, whether this, we can conclude that there's been an entire deficit to college benefits. I think we can safely assume that in today's market, someone with a bachelor's in communications is not as applicable as someone, say, in, uh, that has a science or a technology degree. Just to illustrate the disparity, the U.S. Department of Labor predicts that employment for reporters and uh, correspondents will decrease 14%. Uh, compare this to biomedical engineers whose projected increase is 62% in 
leading up to 2020. Simply put, to say that graduates are losing the benefit to work in their field of their interest is not representative of uh, all graduates and it's a generalization. So I pose a question. How strong was the case made for uh, a decline in benefits? Bachelors are still making more profit than high school grads, and this is increasing uh, according to the census. An increase in college degree holders doesn't mean you can't stand out, and the fact that some grads find, uh, can't find a job in their field does not mean there's been an overall decline uh, to college education. Thank you. All right, Henley. Hen Henley, yes. <laughs> All right, Henry. Uh, the uh, main and secondary claims were very clearly labeled at the beginning, and I thought you had a, a strong, clear signpost on the first point. Uh, your transition stuff is kind of interesting because you don't really make it sound like you're going to make a counter argument. It sounds like you're going to do an assessment of her presentation, but it does turn into a counter argument, and you do criticize uh, the reasoning and the sufficiency of her proof. That's that's fine. It's kind of a general. Uh, uh, response that you're making there. On the particular points, I thought you did a good job uh, talking about the cost issue, for instance, and talking about what the average cost is, comparing it to that million dollars and showing that there is going to be uh, some payoff. And I also like the argument that there is a disparity that is related to um, the different kinds of jobs that people get. I think that that's, you know, on the second point, uh, that's also applicable on this particular point as well. Um, the uh, relationship to the degree and uh, the income that people get, I think, could probably be explored a little bit more, but I thought you had a couple of good uh, pieces of information here that responded to that point uh, very clearly. Your second point was not as clearly signposted, uh, but I could tell where you were because I had been listening and paying close attention. Hopefully everybody else could as well. Uh, mostly you've got a general challenge on the lack of evidence on this point, and then once again, there's an inference that all bachelor degrees are not the same and you talk about how networking or the selection of degree would make a difference. This is one of those places where I think you could show, for instance, that those, well, you did have one statistic that you presented on the third point that talked about the jobs. I think this would be another place where this might apply. I think one of the things that you might want to point out is that all these arguments are interdependent, and even though it might be presented as a uh, cluster argument, it is a chain because if, if you're correct on this last point that some degrees are going to continue to increase in value and uh, there's going to be higher demand for them, uh, then that seems to undermine both the second and the first points on those uh, on this issue. So I think you've got a very good um, uh, argument on this point. I thought you had an excellent summary of the argument that you're making as well and you finished off very effectively. All right, thank you.